Okay, so sorry for the delay. Uh, I'm Jesper Ökvist. I'm from uh, Lund University, Sweden. I'm a PhD student and I've been working with uh, implementing concurrent evaluation for uh, reference attribute grammars. And uh, so the title is pretty long here. And uh, that's because the interesting part in this project was to support uh, circular attributes. So I want to give just a short introduction to the cir to circular reference attributes uh, so before we get into the concurrency. So an attribute grammar is useful for compilers where you can divide your compilation into small uh, single purpose pure functions and these are automatically evaluated and evaluated on demand lazily. And uh, circular attributes are really useful for data flow problems and type inference and reachability and other kinds of fixed point computations. And uh, reference attributes are used for overlaying sort of a graph on top of your abstract syntax tree. So you could have name bindings and type bindings as an extra graph on top of that uh, base tree. So uh, we are working with a system called Jastad and this system has been around for a long time and we've developed several compilers using Jastad and third parties have developed other uh, uh, compilers using our tool. So uh, one example, a couple of examples uh, of uh, projects built with Justad are uh, Xtenj. Uh, this is a, an extensible Java compiler and uh, a Modelica compiler uh, called JModelica. And we've made uh, a few interactive editors also uh, with Justad. So uh, attributes are used for computing properties about your static properties about your program. So if we have, for example, a, a, a Python-like language and we have a block there in this language, we could compute uh, things about the block, like if it has a return statement. And we could compute the, exp the type of an expression uh, and, and things like this. So. Uh, we have, uh, we have, as I said, uh, reference attributes, and these, these uh, add uh, uh, references to other nodes in the abstract syntax tree. So we could take, for example, the declaration of uh, variable use, uh, and then this attribute gives us the, the declaration node. And references are computed dynamically. So we cannot know uh, before executing which uh, where the reference will point. And this means that all of the evaluation of attributes, need, reference attributes, needs to be dynamic. And uh, so we use a recursive evaluation where you take the, the expression for the attribute and evaluate this. And it can, it can use other attributes. So then you'll have to compute those other attributes. So uh, this, is like, uh, this is an illustration of a small attribute system where uh, attribute X uses attribute Y, so we have to we have to go uh, all the way down into the call chain uh, to compute the attributes. And we use memoization, so we can if another attribute uses an attribute that has already been computed, then we don't have to recompute it. We can just reuse the value. So, for example, here we can reuse the value of Z. We only compute it once. And uh, as I said, we have used attributes to develop interactive tools. And this is very useful because we can take an, an existing compiler and use the attributes to provide useful information for the tool, like uh, finding declarations or, or uh, finding completions. And uh, one example of a tool is uh, a student project uh, for their master's thesis. We had two students that developed a tool which shows you an abstract syntax tree we can select nodes in the tree and, uh, and select attributes and compute them to see their values. So in, in this case, we have computed a reference attribute pointing to a declaration as the, in the previous example. So uh, since this is an interactive tool, we want, we want to be able to have these interactive queries and compute them quickly. But you could imagine that uh, you have a background thread that uh, is running some compilation task that takes a long time. So uh, how can we provide low latency for these interactive queries? 
Well, uh, one way would be to have uh, concurrent attributes. If we had concurrent evaluation of attributes, we could uh, run the, the interactive query regardless of what, are, what other background tasks are currently running. Uh, so, for example, if we have a long-running compilation task, uh, we, can, we can still do completion and uh, declaration lookup in, in an interactive thread. Uh, and, and concurrent evaluation also could enable uh, speed up by parallelizing compilation. So even in a non-interactive compiler, we could uh, benefit greatly from having concurrent evaluation. So the idea uh, of having concurrent attributes is also that we can reuse work that another thread has done. So if we have two threads evaluating attributes in the small AST, we could imagine that uh, it would be useful if one thread could reuse the results from the other thread. So this means that we have to share data between the threads. And uh, this introduces the problem of synchronization between threads. Uh, so we have to have some way to safely share data between the threads. And for most attributes, this is, uh, this is quite easy. You could even use locks. However, uh, it gets more complicated if you want to support circular attributes. So circular attributes are very useful for uh, data flow problems and type inference and reachability, uh, as I mentioned previously. So let's just have a, a brief reminder of what, what uh, circular attribute is. So it's like a fixed point function. Uh, so we could, we could have a very stupid fixed point function and we want to compute this with attributes. And to do this, we translate the, the mathematical function into attribute code that's very similar. And uh, I think this, uh, this example here is uh, nice because it shows that we have we have a recursion here. And uh, since the mathematical uh, function is recursively defined, uh, we need a bottom value to compute this with fixed point iteration. But uh, the, it's nice to have this recursive definition. You don't have to manually handle the fixed point iteration. Uh, you leave this to the attribute evaluator. It, it will do the fixed point iteration and iterate until the value is fixed. So this, this is one of the nice things about attributes is that uh, you just define what you want to compute and you let the system evaluate it for you. Uh, so now if we look at the control flow for computing an attribute, we could have a cycle. And uh, we of course have to handle this cycle when we try to compute our attribute. We can't just recursively spin in this cycle infinitely. So we can do this by having a, a visit the flag for each attribute that tells us if we've already been there and then reuse the previous approximation. Uh, so that's fine for sequential evaluation. But what if we have two threads that are evaluating attributes in this same abstract syntax tree? Well, it could be that in most cases they don't uh, have uh, cir circular dependencies. But if you have a circular attribute somewhere, then you could have uh, a situation where you have circular locking. So then of course you get a deadlock. You have two threads that where one, one already started locking parts of this cycle. Another thread com comes in and locks, locks another part of the dependency cycle. And then they'll run into each other and won't be able to progress. So we want a lock-free implementation. We want a lock-free algorithm for supporting concurrent circular attributes. Um, so uh, the visit flags don't need to be synchronized between threads. We can have that as thread local data. So the only tricky part for supporting circular attributes in the concurrent setting is uh, to share approxim uh, approximations between threads. Uh, so uh, the, the main idea for, for sharing attribute approxim approximations in a fixed point iteration is that we take a, a snapshot of the attribute value, then we recompute the value, and then we try to update, and only if no other thread uh, could update the, the value before us, then we can update the value. And uh, this needs to be done atomically, so we can implement this with a compare and set. 
so, so that solves our, uh, uh, our problem with uh, locking. And uh, now we have a lock-free algorithm. But it's in fact even weight-free because if we fail to update an approximation, we can just reuse uh, the result from another thread. So uh, this is great for, for uh, performance. It, it means that we don't have to spin and try to update the approximation until we, until we succeed. We can try once, and if we fail, we just continue uh, with our work. Uh, and uh, this, uh, we think uh, this algorithm is uh, very useful because it supports all kinds of fixed point attributes, not, uh, not, not uh, there, there is no restriction, it just has to be well defined. It just has to have a fixed point and be, mon uh, and the, the attribute just needs to monotonically increase to reach that fixed point with a, a bottom value. And uh, one nice uh, result that we had was that we found that uh, we only need one attribute in the dependency cycle to be circularly evaluated. So previously, um, uh, the, the paper that introduced circular attributes in reference attribute grammars uh, said that all attributes that could be in a dependency cycle need to be declared circular. circular. But uh, we, we, can, we can relax that requirement and only require that, that uh, at, at least one is declared circular. Uh, and we implemented this in uh, the JustAd system. And uh, so it supports all the attributes that uh, JustAd uh, attribute, uh, all, it supports all uh, attributes supported by JustAd. And this thing means that we can, we can use our concurrent evaluation for all existing projects uh, made with, built with JustAd. So uh, the Java and Modelica compilers uh, I mentioned previously and interactive tools. Uh, so we wanted to measure latency and we used uh, 10 uh, large uh, programs from the Qualitas corpus to measure latency for interactive queries. And what we did was we ran uh, a, a long running computation checking for pro uh, compiled problems in, in the pro whole program. We ran that in one thread and if you use the circular implementation then you have to have a lock to ensure that only one thread computes attributes at the time. Uh, so, so this gives um, a very long latency if you, have to, uh, if you have to wait for the background task. But using concurrent, using concurrent evaluation, we, uh, we can run it almost uh, instantly. So we get a very low latency. And uh, I also implemented parallel uh, evaluation in uh, Java compiler in X10J. And uh, this results in about uh, two times speed up for error checking. And uh, I think it can be improved a little bit more, but uh, it took, uh, it's very encouraging that we could speed it up because Java is a very, um, it's, it's a very complicated language to, to s split up uh, the parts of the compilation. It, it, you can't almost uh, uh, do it, you cannot do it uh, manually because uh, everything has dependencies on, on each other. Uh, you really need some kind of system to automatically uh, parallelize it for you. Uh, and maybe if you, have, if you write a compiler from scratch that uh, is meant to be uh, uh, running in parallel, then maybe you could uh, improve your performance even more. Because this compiler was originally not intended to compile in parallel. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that was uh, all I wanted to show you right now. But you can take a look at our technical report that has uh, correctness proofs and uh, more, more information. So, thank you so much for listening.